now available on Amazon, The Frozen Kitchen, The Cookbook of Ice Fishing, by our man, Ryan Pinkala. Go grab yourself one off of Amazon today, and make sure to leave a five-star review. Thank you, everyone, for the support, and happy cooking. So this northeast United States area is really cool. It's, uh, you know, basically the north end of New England. We're in Maine right now. It is honestly unbelievable. It is cabin country Minnesota on steroids. There's just these beautiful New England style houses, obviously. But like the cool thing in the area we're at is it's like, it's really, really hilly. They're, they're called mountains, but they're not really a mountain. Like it's just a big giant hill and you drive around and all the lakes are in the valleys, which are super cool. So like the views out here are amazing. I mean, there's postcards around every corner, basically. There's just water everywhere, streams, lakes, the ocean, and all these little towns and communities. And I mean, the Northeast is kind of just a historic part of the country too. So a lot of the communities that are out here are, are really old and, you know, have a lot of history. So the tree foliage is pretty similar to the UP of Michigan actually, but um, it's super dense. You feel like you're kind of out there a little bit. It, it does feel like cabin country, definitely. There's small streams, little rivers everywhere. Everything lead, you know, is running, running water everywhere, leading into these really cool lakes. And uh, there's a lot of diverse looking lakes up here. You've got some that are super stained, some that are super clear, and uh, it's just a really interesting place to fish. So we came here for a specific reason. Well, I mean, the reason we came out here is obviously to catch huge crappies, because that's what, you know, kind of the whole thing of this, this series is. The reason we came here is because the biggest crappies probably in the United States live here or in the Twin Cities. And we've shown you guys the Twin Cities ones for two years. This year, we wanted to leave no stone left unturned, really, and uh, it's, it's brought us to Maine. The New England area in general has them, but like, it's Maine. Maine has them. The research we've done, the people we've talked to, we just know the potential out here and that it's just an untouched, unknown area for crappies. Like, and we're trying to show that off to help because there's a couple guys here that we met that like want to get these fish protected to be like an actual species because like literally nobody cares about them out here. To have the average size that they do here, let alone the top end, Potentially 20 inch fish, I mean, that's ridiculous. When you talk about crappie fishing, most people are talking 12 to 14 inches. We're literally potentially talking about 20 inch caliber fish, and it's absolutely mind blowing. It's just really cool because this place is super unique. It's way different, but it seems like it still has that caliber of fish that, you know, we've been chasing all over the ice belt. So we came here to kind of catch a big one and also showcase the area and say, hey, this is a destination location to catch big perch, crappies, pike, I mean, bluegill, I mean, we've caught everything. And it's just, um, nobody knows about it. For our third trip of the season, a momentous one, we travel across the country to another North Star State settled in the far north reaches of the Appalachian Mountains. In a land of rushing rivers and heavy snowfall, you find a haze of the salt water that crashes its rocky coast. This is, quite possibly, the most beautiful and expansive playground any ice fisherman could dream of. A place commonly forgotten across the ice belt and known as the Pine Tree State. These hills and valleys play host to a population of crappies few have ventured to chase. Welcome to Maine. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Look at this thing! God! Beast!
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a now very wintry Maine. Uh, yesterday was very mild, and there was basically no snow on the ground. That changed drastically. It has snowed about probably four inches already since we went to bed. It's early in the morning, and we got to drive. There's crappies all over the state of Maine now. Going to meet up with our buddy CJ, and uh, the hope today is to finally show you a glimpse of what is possible here. We are very excited for this. This drive is really gonna suck and hoping it'll be worth it. And we have a feeling it will be. So stay with us, it's gonna be fun. And uh, we're gonna need a lot of Black Rifle coffee today because it is super early. So if you want any, there's a code linked down below. We're gonna hit the road. It's time to catch some freaks. So we're out on the lake. We got uh, two different live units down right now. We got ours, and we're just breaking down this basin. Then our buddy CJ is over there looking around too, just trying to locate these fish. It's kind of, he says, a morning bite window area. So we just got to chase them around in this basin, see where they want to relate. Today, we got a lot of snow, so it's a lot more work dragging stuff around. But uh, I think Griff said he found one, so we're gonna see if we can drill on them. God. <laughs> well, that's a start to the day. Wow. <laughs> Sick. Look at that thing. That's a moose, dude. <laughs> that was the first ones we got on. Look at that. Pinhead slurped it. I didn't even get a chance to start my GoPro yet. We had just seen those two and figured we'd drop on them way high off bottom. Check Sick. The weight of that one. Let's see what we got here. We're going to wait, then we'll throw it on the bump. 149. 149. One and a half. He's a little thin in the belly. Yeah, but his thin back in the belly. is insane. Look at that build across the back. Super tall fish. I'll be shocked if this one doesn't go 15. Wow. You're going to be shocked. Not even close. Look at that. 14 and three quarter. The build on these is dumb. Look at the size of the head. We don't see that too much. The freaking amount of head on this fish is crazy. I would have big eyed that one, no question. Yeah. Well, you did. Yeah. Oh my God, that is so sick. That's our first uh, beast in Maine. And the funny thing is, that's a little one, yeah. they say. So uh, we're gonna get back to it because there's definitely fish around. CJ yeah. ran into some more and let's do this thing, man. Yeah, and that was a wolf pack. So we'll see if we can refine them. There was at least two more with them. Awesome fish. All right, awesome fish. Sweet start to the day. It was literally first drop. <laughs> so sick. I'm gonna let this one go. See if we can get an even bigger one. Yes, let's go. That was sick. Grips on. <laughs> oh yeah. Another good one. One like pinks. Look at that. God, these fish are awesome. <laughs> Look at how big the eyeballs are on these things. I know, they're huge. How old are these fish? I don't know. They gotta be old. Look at how big their eyeballs are. I've never seen copies with that big eyeballs. Their eyeballs are huge. Literally 14. Look at his mouth so when you shut it, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. 14. Right on the nut. Start the day. All right. Not, this... a, bad, not, a, not a bad start to the day, huh? Right? <laughs> yeah. We gotta be Mainers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a pretty cool start to the morning. So I think uh, we're gonna start grabbing some more vexes and we're just gonna end up chasing them down sharpshooting them uh, unless we run into a big pack but those couple have been solos so let's do this 
that's that was fun compared to all the nine to ten inches yesterday. Yeah. yeah, and you just watch them come up the hole, and you're like, that's big. <laughs> you set all right. the hook. It's actually you're like, oh, that stopped. It just sat there. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I had those perch were down there, and all of a sudden that other mark just shows up and was like, I got you. <laughs> I was like, cool. Negatory. Yeah, that was very cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you just up the hole that fast? Yeah, well, it's only nine feet right here. Okay, apparently there's two more. That's my first big one. They just came screaming in. Yeah, we watched them on live. They were just like. <laughs> <laughs> there's one about to go under here. Other the one behind me? There's one coming to you right now. Oh, yeah. Watch out. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he's coming back yet. I'll talk about this one. Here, you want to grab my rod and just hop to the other one? Yep. Okay, so just caught this one. I had another one coming in, but uh, yeah, this thing just vapor trailed the pinhead, caught it on Pink's rod. Super fun to fight these fish on that rod, and they're so aggressive out here. Um, but that's just an awesome fish. Like Griff said, their eyes are just enormous. So I don't know how old these things are. This guy's a little beat up on the tail and stuff, but just beautiful crappie. So we're gonna get this one back. They're mean, they're angry, and they want to eat. So we're going to keep chasing them around. This is sick. All we're doing right now is we're just in this kind of back basin area. Um, it's really shallow most of the place, but there's kind of this old, I don't even know if it's a river or a creek channel, and they're just migrating along it and going to this feeding platform. But we're going to keep chasing them down. Name of the game with these fish is definitely going to be sharpshooting because it doesn't look like they're very schooled up, but we can pick them off one by one, and they're huge. So we're going to do that. That's a good one. Ooh. Whoa. Drag's frozen. Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, good. You got that other one there. The one that was telling me that was on the bottom. Shoot ass. Oh. Damn it. I thought I had a headshot. Dude, it was. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> oh, that gave me a heart attack. Yeah. Oh yeah, go for it. <laughs> Dude, that, my, my heart was beating out of my chest there because I, I set the hook I was like, oh. <laughs> I had a bunch of little dink gills on the screen. They just disappeared, so he might be coming in. Yep, here he is. There we go. There's a good one. Might need a bump. Yeah, bump board and camera. That was a tank. That one bit. Oh yeah. That one bit the uh, the Pinhead Pro. That's the one eighth ounce size. We're giant hunting today, so I decided to go big. Came right up about 15 foot of water and absolutely tanked it. That's a beautiful fish though. Wow, they just look old too. That's a good one. Yeah, he's he's heavy. Yeah, that one's built way better than mine was. <laughs> Might have no belly meat. I got 13 and three quarter. Beautiful. Look how tall that fish is. That's absolutely gorgeous. Super thick, healthy fish. Came straight up and just smoked that pinhead. I had a bunch of little bluegills on the screen. We sharpshooted him on live. We knew he was near, and all of a sudden, the bluegills just completely disappeared. And I had this mark come in about four foot off bottom, and he just raced up and tanked it. There was, there was no hesitation. That pinhead with that little flipper on the, the hook, I was just letting it dance down there and came up, and that power noodle tip just boink. That was perfect. Let's get this guy back. Oh, yeah, he was ready to go. Nice. Yeah. That was awesome. Well, we're gonna keep bouncing around here. There's a little trough through here. And it seems like uh, these fish are just running the edges of the trough and coming in and out between the high spots and the low spots. So it seems like when they come off that high spot, they just stay at that same depth range. So they're right around four to six foot off bottom, 15 foot of water, can't ask for much more. Big. 
Large mouse. School wide mouse. Oh, I thought that was a giant. <laughs> <Big and high. laughs> we just, I just sat in that hole and we had a couple pods of fish moving through and it, they definitely look like crappies and they definitely were not. At least this one wasn't, but that would have been a perfect crappie. Oh well. Let's see here. And they're moving slow like crappies. Yeah, man. <laughs> it came in and I was like, oh, oh wow. Those are some giant marks, and then all of a sudden, dink, bass. Oh well. Still there. Oh, uh, unless that's you. Oh, that's a bass. Oh yeah, nice large mouth. There's another nice largey. Again, eighth ounce pinhead. Nice so little large mouth. Get him back. Beautiful. I set the hook into that one. I'm like, ah, I don't think that's a crappie. Bluegill! <laughs> Alright, so consensus is we are now chasing around large mouth. So the morning bite's over. That's okay. There are lakes all over Maine, so we're just going to go hop in the trucks and drive a little bit further and go check another basin. But that was fun this morning. Lit them up real good for like 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, now we're going to go try something new. This is a quick and final reminder that this Saturday, February 11th from 5 to 10 p.m., we will be having a Break Your PB St. Jude fundraiser. Come swing out to the brewery. Have a beer with us, celebrate the end of the season, and knock a few back to raise some money for St. Jude. See you all there. So as we, when we first started filming the Crappie Chronicles back in uh, three years ago now, back in 2020, um, we knew how big of crappies were in the Twin Cities, and we had heard of other places that had them, but. New Eng the New England area in general was always somewhere that popped up on our radar. Just the research was like, it, the funny thing was is I typed in Maine crappies and I got like zero results. Like there was like, um, do they exist? You know, we're hearing they exist, but like you type it in on the internet, you should usually be able to find something about Maine and crappies. And I, I got like one hit. So Maine is super interesting from the aspect of crappies are not necessarily native to this region, although it's a native fish to, you know, North America and obviously across the Midwest and a lot of other parts of this country. They didn't originate here and, you know, they kind of showed up as almost what's been considered an invasive species in this area. Crappies out here haven't been here for a super long time. Uh, from what we've found through research and just word to mouth is that the crappies have really only been here since like the mid 90s. And that's, uh, that's really cool because it has absolutely exploded. There really isn't that much out there about them, but as we've gotten out here and fished, they're very prevalent in a lot of places. It's unclear as far as how they spread into this area, especially throughout New England, but Maine specifically, um, they've only been around here for you know about 25 years or so. And that's a very interesting dynamic that we're kind of getting into with that because not only is there very little information out there, I mean, fishing is popular in this area, but there's not a ton of people and, you know, they go out and they're targeting other species. It's really not something that they prioritize at all. For whatever reason, it seems like it really hasn't caught on fishing wise out here, uh, which I don't know if they just don't realize that they're amazing to eat or they're a ton of fun to catch and target because of how fast and furious it can be when you get on top of a school. Uh, but they are very uh, underappreciated out here. I mean, the DNR doesn't even protect them, which definitely needs to change because there's giant fish out here. Like, people are catching these things accidentally. Like, I think every state wreck, every time it's been broken, it's been when the fish are, people are targeting something else. It's crazy to think that they have such a strong fishery that no one's really looking at. And, you know, locals out here really don't target these fish. They don't have any kind of really respect for that resource that they have. 
Even though it may have not been a native one, it's something that they have now that I think they could do a great job of kind of building up and it's a fishery that I think a lot of people would love to come and experience. It's really sad to see that they're not protected and people just lay them on top of the ice out here. I mean, even perch as well. And it seems like they just don't realize the potential that they have for the fisheries out here and how truly special they can be. Yeah, so we're heading out here on a different lake. Um, he said he was out here a couple weeks ago, but we're just going to check the ice because he said it can be a little sketchy. So um, nobody out here, we haven't seen a person with a spud bar. Um, out here, they just seem to walk out there until they, if they fall in, it's not safe. So um, don't do that. But we like to run with spud bar, ice picks to get you out if you do fall through, and then a float suit um, will really help you with that. It'll save your life. Um, but yeah, don't just walk out there and if you fall through, it's not safe. That's not the proper way of doing it. That's a little school of dinks. That's not what you saw, though. No, you that's, uh, that's what I saw. Okay. Take a lap. 20, just go go to those ones before they move. They're following this 20? Shit. Yeah, 20. 21, if you want to get spicy. Yep. Right oh, the one just showed up. It looks right. On. Go off. Dumped him. Hold on, he's still here. Yeah, he's pissed. Or whatever, he stayed. Like, he's here, now he's coming up again. Oh, he touched it. Holy mother. Dude, he just keeps re-engaging hard. Coming back up. Got him that time. You wanna pull that deucer, please? I don't know if he's big, but... not small. Solid one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh sick. Look at that thing. Another one probably in that like 13 class. Look at how old these fish look. Their eyeballs are gigantic. Such a big freaking dome on them. Sick. Look at that pinhead. Got him. Oh yeah. All right let's see what see what this thing goes. God these fish look so cool. I literally hooked that fish pulled him up a foot plus and dumped him. And he re-engaged with it like two or three more times, finally got him to eat again. Let's see what he is. His mouth's all jacked up. There we go. 14 and a half. Nice fish. Rinse him off just a little bit. Awesome main crappie right there. Look at these fins and stuff. He just looks freaking old. Everything about him is just big. All right, so I'm gonna let this one go. That was super cool. We just kind of came out to this new basin. God, I think it's big. <laughs> there he goes. Uh, we tried this morning. We got on a few that were pretty nice fish, and then it just kind of tapered off. They totally left us, so we opted to go to a totally different place. We're out here now just kind of basin chasing. We've only been out here for like 20 minutes, and we're just hole hopping, kind of scanning with live, and these fish aren't schooled up at all. There's a few small schools of like dinks that are all together. They almost look like bait, and then you just see these big either singles or like two together that are just cruising around and luckily they're not leaving like they're letting us drill on them and that time was cool there was two of them down there i plucked him went right back down re-engaged two or three times and loaded up and caught him so this is super cool we're just basin hunting right now okay unless that's it eh Could be. yeah 525 it's gotta be oh yeah. oh yeah you ready otherwise i'm going it's coming right here. Yes, and that's what we did. We did. You take a photo of it on the bump, selfie, and then. Yeah. Got him. That was that one that was way out there. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, biggie. Ooh, biggie. This one's grown. Come on. 
Get up here. Get up here. Oh, it doesn't like it. It does not like it. Ooh, yes. Ooh, get him. Ooh, yes. Ooh, get him. It needs to cut head up the hole. Head up the hole. Get him. Get him. Yeah, Biggie. Real Hank. Biggie. This Hank. one's real big. <laughs> Bird. Oh, 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 my God. That's a freaking moose, dude. Oh, yeah. That's a stud crappie, dude. That. Look at the mouth on that thing. Just Ooh. a freaking bucket. Sick. That's very big. That's a good one. We will see exactly. That is I don't want to guess, but I Let's just bump it. Let's just bump it. Hit a milestone. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. God, it's long, dude. 15 and a half. Ooh. <laughs> what a beast. Thick mama. Look at that thing. Blimp. Sick. Look at the tail. Like I'm telling you, these fish are old, dude. They've been through it. Like, they got all kinds of weird stuff going on. The dome. It's like a freaking squid eyeball. Look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool. Just base and roamers. This was just a single. Again, just floating around a little school of, like, I think just dink crappies. And uh, I was trying to get barred on it, honestly, and it just started slowly drifting. I dropped the vex down and, like, jigged for two seconds. It showed up and just popped that pinhead, dude. Thanks, girl. See ya. Okay. All right. So this area is super unique. That was a freaking donk of a fish. Seriously. That's a world-class fish. Yeah, that is, like, unbelievable. I mean, we're coming from an area that people chase crappies, like, most of the year. And we're just kind of cruising around up here, finding these fish, stumbling around. I mean, CJ's helping us out big time, but literally we're just coming to lakes and catching like 13 to 15 inches. And it's just stupid that this is even like a thing. It's like a playground up here. I can't believe that more people aren't like taking advantage of this opportunity. And then also that people aren't like trying to make this fishery more of a, you know, a thing that people can come here and do. And I think it would be amazing if, you know, we could start seeing those type of fish getting released to try to get these genetics that hold in some of these lakes instead of just flopping them on the ice and and just leaving them for the eagles but whew, that was sick i just want to go and do it again and i know a lot of people would love to come and do this too so hopefully maine fingers crossed this fishery sticks around for a while because it's freaking unbelievable oh there he is got him, got him. Ooh. Freaking hog. Oh yeah. Hog. <laughs> on the Tika minnow. Nice. Good job, hey, man. Dude, I think it's white. They want that white because I've been dropping down pink and black and they want it bright. They want it super bright. That's why I've been using that shark juice ever since I got here. Yeah, we need the bump. Just bop this awesome fish. Super old fish. Let's see how long she goes. Mouth shut. 14 and three quarter. Let's get her back. Beautiful release on that fish. So right now we're just hopping around this basin and we're just sharpshooting them. And uh, that one absolutely train wrecked the Tika minnow. But if you guys wanna come out here, we're with our friend CJ here and he guides out here for any species, but he's really the only guide that actually targets these big crappies. Um, we're, we looked for friends yeah, all over the internet. Yeah. We found zero. Yeah, we found <laughs> zero besides CJ. So if you guys wanna come out here and chase these giant fish, CJ has a bunch of lakes where these things exist. And so definitely hit him up. We'll put his link in the description below. And uh, yeah, come out here, have a great time. These fish are absolutely awesome. They're they're huge fish too. So, uh, and they're they're not really shy. I mean, that thing ate a eighth ounce tikka minnow. So they're pretty aggressive. So we're gonna keep getting after her here, but definitely look up CJ if you want to come out to Maine and have an awesome time. Yeah, CJ, you wanna you wanna fish for crappies more, right? Not oh, yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to get more people out here pan fishing, experience in Maine, seeing what we have to offer out here. Yeah. You know, from talking to you guys and a lot of other people, quality that we have. Is special. Is amazing compared yeah. to a lot of other places. So we'd love to get more people out here hunting these down the way that we do. Yeah. Getting on these schools. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, because CJ fishes these the same exact way we do. Sharp shoots them with the live imaging and you get right on top of them and you pinpoint specific fish. So it's the same exact way that we fish back home. Yep. And we can do it one of two ways. People want eaters. We got ponds with more eaters. Yep. 
we do the same thing. Find the schools, get on top of them. Or if you're looking for that trophy, you do what we're all doing today. Put the work in, sharp hunt them down. Yeah. And that's what we're gonna do for like the next three days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back after it, boys. Still there. Mm. That might be him. What was your thing? Here we go. Thirteen and three quarters. I'm leaving you, sorry. Oh yeah. Perfect. I got him. <laughs> Twins. That was pretty sweet. What'd you get yours on? Pinhead. Pinhead? Chartreuse with orange back. I got mine. Or orange belly. I got mine on a teacup. Nice job. Ooh. Wonder bread teacup. I think we figured out that they want it bright. They want it really bright. Yeah. Brighter absolutely. Color. Yeah. yeah two beautiful, beautiful ones. Boom. They got some cool little foreheads on them, yeah, too. They do. Super I'm old one back. Uh, just the way they're shaped. Let's see them. Yeah. That's a long one. Yeah, it was long. Bye, friend. Oh, it's so long I don't kick down the hole. <laughs> Heck yeah, <laughs> homie. Nice this is awesome. That was fun. That thing showed no hesitation. He saw that Tika minnow and just came unglued. And guess what? It looks like it looks like there's another one down there. I'm gonna try to catch him. There's a good one. Nice one. That one's a healthy one. Let's see that bump board. That right there is another beautiful one. Let's get him on the bump board. Mouth shut, 14 and a quarter. There's an absolute unit, 14 and a quarter. I'm gonna let him go over here. Oh, that was graceful. Or not. That was also graceful, there we go. Okay, so, big thing with these fisheries out here is catch and release. These, uh, these are really old fish. We want them to go back. Um, it seems like a lot of people, uh, you know, it seems like out here they just leave them lay on the ice, they, and this is such a special. They call 15 inches eaters. Yeah, you know you can get all the meat you want off of 11, 12 inch crappy. Yeah, exactly. And all they're doing is just you're taking the genetics out of the lake. So it's super important to to release those big ones, those old fish. Uh, it keeps those genetics in the lake. It also balances out the population and doesn't allow them to stunt. Um, and that's super important. So uh, if they're over 12, let them go. Keep the smaller ones for a meal and uh, you'll have a fishery to enjoy for years to come. Yeah, buddy. Another solid one here. God, these fish are awesome. Just a stud. Beautiful yeah, fish. Like Big old eyed crappies. About a 13 and a quarter. Beep. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you for your time. Adios. Yeah, 65. Those ones should buy it. There's a whole school of them. Facing, you know, I can't see it. That'll work. Got him. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah, that's a real one. Another stud, dude. That is sick.
Oh, he bought it, bit it so light, too. Dude, look at that one's eye. Dude, that's eye is crazy. Look at that thing. Just like a mega pupil on it. <laughs> These fish are crazy, dude. I'm going to fluff the deucer back in because I swear there was a second one. Oh. Behind me? All right. I'm going to get this thing back down. There's some more down there. I'm going to see. What is this one? God, he's long, too. 14 and a quarter. Jeez. Another beautiful, beautiful main crappie. Get this thing back down. Such a sick fish. All right. I'm going. There's more behind me. I'm going to try to get another hole and get you a bigger one. We'll go after those other ones in a minute, but these okay. two are right here. Yep. Five feet closer. Uh, go back to the hole you just drilled. You pushed him right back to that hole. No, I think he's right off to the side, but... Okay. I mean, he just kind of... He was there while it was going down, and then he kind of left. Yeah, there was two of them. Oh, they're still there. Here they come. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, dude, watch. <laughs> that was insane. They came so fast to you. They were like, oh, wait. <laughs> like, he just appeared, and he was just racing yeah, up. Yeah, they were racing over to it. Oh, they my were, God. That was sick. They were fighting. That was it, sick. Oh, another big one. Oh, my God. Look at this thing. God. Beast. <laughs> another one. That is sick fish, dude. Dude, that was dirty. Yeah. That was sick. That was so awesome. Oh, that one's not as big as the last one, but holy cow. Huh? Just over 14, not quite 14 and a quarter. Woo! That was a sick little flurry. Oh my God. Let's clean him off a little bit. Cool, cool, cool. These fish are snapping right now. It's just like we have to get around them. You get a bait in front of them and it's a done deal. Pinhead again. So sick. Look at that fish. Beast crappie. Sick. Let's grab a couple picks. Beautiful fish. Let's get this thing back. Like non-stop 14 to 15 inches. <laughs> this is crazy. I cannot believe this. Like more people need to do this. This is 10 out of 10 crappie fishing. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> you want some more? There's, I mean, there's one. No, those aren't it. Okay. There's four of them right there. 70 feet, 68 feet. Here, I'm going to get closer to them. Could you see the bait on there too? Uh, probably, yeah. Oh, we could see it on the live, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've seen your bait and then they were just like. <laughs> There's other two or, or four right here. Right there. Yep. There's four of them. Five of them. Yeah, they're grouping up at 30 feet. Oh, they're here. Come on, get down there. Get down there. Yep. This is crazy. Here he comes. Got him. Ooh, that one's heavy. Feels really, really big. I didn't get an excellent hook set, but... Ooh, he's dogging. This one feels big, dude. Yeah, he looked really big. I thought it was two. It's like, it actually it so feels big. heavy. Those other ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, my, oh God. my God, dude. Ooh, that's a moose. Yes, dude. Look at that crappie, dude. That's a blimp. <laughs> nice job. Man. That is so sick. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Holy crap. 16, oh, 15 and a half. 15 and a half, but this one's tall, yeah, dude. Tall. 15 and a half skyscraper. All right, we're gonna try to get a weight on this thing. 15 and a half, but this is by far the biggest one I've seen today by weight. It's super built. I'm gonna clip it on the scale real quick. See what we got. 2.02. 202? 
Locked in at two pounds, exactly. Two pounder. God, the, the build on these fish is incredible. I've never seen any crappies like this ever. Their head is just so bad. I think I've said that a bajillion times, but every time they come up, you're like, oh my God. I mean, look at the mouth on this thing. That's ridiculous. I can't wait to see an even bigger one. <laughs> like, these fish are insane. This is so nasty. God, and just freaking smashing a pin here. That's our absolute favorite way to catch these things, and they're just doing it dirty today. All right, I'm just going to get this thing back. That's an absolute moose of a crappie. I can't even believe that thing. So sick. I can't believe it keeps happening. Every time it's like, you feel like you have a shot to go get one, you drop down and they're just racing up and it's like, literally just stare at your rod tip and it just wham, pinned. Unbelievable. Freaking main, dude. God. He's in front of you because he just spoke it, he just came this way because of you. Thank you, yeah, right there. Yep, drop it down there. He's going to swim right under your hole. Got him. It was just falling and a brick just came. Ooh. Ooh. I can't see. There's so much slush. Oh my god. Every single time. God. <laughs> it's crazy. Every single time. <laughs> Look at that. It's just ridiculous. All right. <laughs> Another one on the pinhead. A little chartreuse. God, it's like a moose. So sick. So freaking sick. God, I don't even know what to say anymore. These things are just monstrous. There you go. 14 and a half inch here again. Ooh. Crazy, it's just like 14, 14 and a half, 15, 15 and a half, 14 and a half. Just, it's everything you could ever want. This is just crazy. And I can't believe that they get bigger than this. Like, we just keep talking about how there's like 18s live here, 20s freaking live here, five inches longer than this fish. That's ridiculous to even think about, but we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to get one. <laughs> Send it back. This place is sick. Dude. All right, update. We are, uh, we're gonna go try to get an 18 now. We got a ton of 15s by we, the boys did. It's a team effort out here. Different guys looking at live drilling holes and just being in the right place at the right time. So yeah, that was sick. Very, very cool fish, very big fish, but told you all along, it's been three years. We want an 18. There's real chances to get them here. So we're gonna go try to make it happen here at sunset. A little stuck. So stay we're, to the right. We're stuck. Actually, CJ stuck. He was trailblazing. Yeah, he was blasting a path for us, and uh, the path kind of took him elsewhere. There's a creek in this road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they uh, out here. They caught a brick. It's definitely a brook. We just need to push him a bit. Yeah. I drove right through this the other day, but this we didn't have. Slow. There you go, bat. Call me a dog. Fetch it. Find a stick. Find it sticks. This is a big stick. There you go. It is sheer height on it. Oh, there you go. What's the play? You ever? <laughs> There's something to bite into. That was close. This is relatively close. Throw a pigskin a quarter mile. I can throw it over those mountains over there. <laughs> oh, <hey. laughs> oh, watch out! Hammer man! 
down. All right, we are back at the Airbnb, and we're unloading the stuff right now, and we were supposed to have a package delivered from UPS, but you can never really trust uh, any delivery service, I guess. Delivery! And, oh, yeah, it was by the garage. I was going to say I got an email, and I was like, there's nothing on the porch. But, uh, yeah, I looked at the UPS email, and it just said, at garage. Yeah, I so, uh, over and I'm like, oh, hey, there's a box. There it is. Even in a snowstorm. Snowed 10 inches here today. Guess what? Thorn Brothers still got our shipment to us. So, anything, well, we'll go this way, and then we'll talk to you. Yeah, we got new baits to catch fish on. And any of the baits we caught fish on today, you can get them at Thorn Brothers up here in Maine. Just get them shipped to you. Pinhead Minnow Pros straight to the dome get them straight to me but we got some new fun stuff here i'll let waldo open it too because he wasn't here when we ordered it and uh waldo loves new tackle get <laughs> all right what's it so this is our package from thorn bart ordered this Let's see what we got. We've got some beautiful Tika minnows. We've got some Jamie XLs, one of my personal favorites. We've got some, ooh, we've got some Z-Man Stingers. Those are pretty sweet. More Tikas, definitely gonna be tying this one on. Got some Ultralight Rippin' Wraps. Ooh, we got a, something big here. Ooh, fresh reel. Would you look at that? This is mine. Griff was excited about that one. Some more Z-Mans, some more Mackies, and some more Rippin' Wraps. This is awesome. This is like Christmas. Overnight shipping from Thorn. Pretty much any fishing trip that you're on, you can always count on Thorn Brothers to get you what you need. Uh, their online site is super quick, very easy to navigate, and I mean, they have everything you'll ever need. We made it back to the cabin after today, and I'm gonna tell you right now, we freaking smashed them and it felt really good. Unfortunately, we caught so many big ones, we didn't catch any eaters. So, we caught no fish that we could eat today. Luckily, we smashed those perch yesterday. So we have a ton of perch fillets left, and that's what I'm gonna use tonight. So we're in the Northeast, uh, Maine specifically, so what we're gonna do is make a mock lobster roll. So. Yeah, we could get lobsters here, but I want to show you an awesome way to make it without making lobster at all. So we're going to do it with fish today. They're going to be super delicious, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. But this recipe, along with many of the other ones that we've done, are in the new cookbook, The Frozen Kitchen. So if you want to get your hands on that, go check it out on Amazon, and uh, I think you're going to really like it. You're going to love this recipe and all the other ones that are in there. So go check that out. And especially for this trip, we got some new merch out. We brought back the red, white, and blue patriotic hoodie just for this trip. So this will be another limited release one. So if you want to get your hands on one of these, I know they were super popular last year. You can get them now. And we got the Break Your PB merch out. So go check that stuff out. We're going to get to cooking. So let's make some freaking... Okay, so what I'm going to do is just prep a couple of things. So I'm gonna chunk this fish up and then what we're gonna do is just lightly poach that in butter in a pan on the stove. And I got some onion and a little bit of celery here and a little bit of garlic. Then I'm just gonna crush the garlic, that's gonna go in the pan with the fish. I got some celery and onion that we're gonna mix with a little bit of mayo when we mix all this stuff together. Toast up some rolls, melt a little butter. This is an easy one and it's really delicious. And I'm gonna start chopping things up and we'll just get going here right now. Now that all this fish is chunked up, I left it in kind of bigger chunks because what I want to do is with these rolls, I don't want them to just be like this like minced up fish kind of thing. I want nice chunks of fish in there because uh, these are going to be coated in just like some delicious kind of mayo and brown butter situation. It's going to be really good. But I got a pan heating up behind me. I'm going to melt half a stick of butter in there and that's what we're going to kind of cook these in with a little bit of garlic and red onion. And then we're going to throw it in a bowl 
just let it cool down a bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna cut up the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna mix it all together, toast up some buns, and that is it. So this is 50% done already, and all we did was cut some things up. So I'm gonna take this over to the stove, get this going in the pan, and then we're on to the next part. Okay, so I got this butter melted down. I have it on kind of a medium, about medium, medium low heat. I just want this butter to be warmed and melted, and I don't want it to be like sizzling when I drop the fish in. So I got the garlic, and I got this red onion. I'm just gonna slide that in. And I have a thing of paprika right here. I'm gonna put maybe about a half a, half a tablespoon or so. You can gauge this depending on how you like your stuff seasoned, but I'm gonna do probably about half a tablespoon of that. And then just as that's starting to cook down a little bit, it should only take maybe 30 seconds for that garlic to start getting real fragrant. Then I'm just gonna put all the fish in here, just slide it in and essentially butter poach this stuff. So like I said, you don't want it to be sizzling, keep the heat a little bit lower. And it should only take five to six minutes total. The fish will be done and then we'll remove it from the heat and just let it cool. Okay, so that fish is cooking down right behind me. I got a little bit of celery here. I'm just gonna take probably two ribs of this. Maybe three of these ones are pretty short. And what I'm gonna do is cut them up pretty fine. I don't want these to be really, really big chunks, but I do want a little bit of crunch in this uh, fish roll here. So take those tops off. And I'm just gonna split the ribs the long direction. And then just do a nice coarse chop on them. Okay, so I got that celery minced up right there. So I'm just gonna let that chill out. Once the fish is done cooking, I'm gonna throw it in this bowl right here and just let it cool a bit. And this will get added into that. But what I'm gonna do first is mix up in this bowl just a little bit of mayonnaise. And then also a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. Old Bay is just a classic, classic seasoning for seafood. And I'm gonna go a little bit of Old Bay with a little bit of Catch and Cook Whiteout. Again, I want this kind of a garlic pump. So I got the garlic sauteing with the fish and a little bit of garlic in this. And what this is gonna actually do is be what we're gonna to use to toast our bread. So add this in here. And just a little bit of Old Bay, maybe about a teaspoon in there. This stuff is really strong, it's highly salty so you don't go crazy with it. But like I said, all we're doing is toasting up our buns with it. So I'm gonna mix that up. And as soon as I'm done with this, that fish should be ready to come off. Perfect. Okay, so once I get all the fish out of here, there's gonna be a little bit of moist or uh, liquid, I guess, in the bottom of this with some butter, a little bit of the, just the moisture that comes out of the fish. And what I'm gonna do is throw this back on the stove behind me and just reduce that a little bit. So we kind of have like a, a little bit of a butter sauce out of that deal. And that's actually gonna top our rolls as soon as we're done. So I'm gonna let this just reduce just slightly behind me, let that cool down, and then we're gonna start building some rolls. All right, so I'm gonna get these buns ready to go. What I'm gonna do on these is just take a little slice off of each side so I got kind of this nice unfinished edge here. And that's what we're gonna toast up in this pan behind me. And instead of using butter on this, what I'm gonna do is use that seasoned mayo that we just did brush a little bit on the sides of each one and that is going to brown up beautifully in that pan behind me so i got a cast iron getting hot you don't need to get it absolutely ripping hot but like medium heat on that and this will brown up super nice in about two minutes and then we'll just do each one All right, so the fish is all cooled down now. I got the buns ready to rip. So I got a little bit of mayo. I'm just gonna do like one big tablespoon of that into the fish mixture. And then I'm gonna add that celery that I minced up in there. And then last thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do just a little bit of lemon juice into this. Awesome. Give that a nice little mix. And I don't want this to be like a 
super thick, you know, chicken salad consistency type thing. I just want that mayo to just barely coat everything up nice. That celery is going to be really nice and crunchy. And all those flavors from that fish are going to come right on through, which is amazing. So I'm just going to load up all these buns. And then we're ready to eat. I do like to add a little bit of hot sauce in here. I got this one right here. It's a pineapple habanero from Logs. And the cool thing about making these type of rolls is you can really kind of mess with the flavors as much as you want. I like them kind of hot. And this is kind of a sweet and hot hot sauce. A couple teaspoons of that in there. You give it a little more pop. And we're ready to go. So I'll get these all loaded up. Do a little lemon zest on the top. Probably garnish it with a little bit of green onion and put it in the meat. Alright, so we got these put all together. So lobster rolls are a classic main food and uh, we wanted to do a different spin on it. So this is awesome. We wanted to do it with crappies. Didn't work out. So what do we got? Bunch of perch. I love to eat perch just as much as I love to eat crappies. So this is gonna turn out really, really good. I'm gonna have Luke try it out and I'm gonna crush one at the same time. We're gonna start eating here. Probably hammer these, hammer a few more. I got some more fish sitting over here. But we had a great day today. Like I said, we caught some absolute freakazoids and I was super happy about that. But tomorrow, this will obviously come out after the fact, but we're fishing the Fish Donkey Clam Trap Attack Tournament tomorrow and Sunday. So it's a two day event online. We're competing against people all over the ice belt and we plan on taking the crappie division. So this is coming out after the fact. So when we win it, you heard it here first. All right, Luke, let's dig in. Let's do it. Oof. Oh. These are looking minty. It's heavy. What do you think? You don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> these look great. They taste great. I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. Awesome way to use fish. More of a seafood traditional kind of situation here. Very delicious. Mm. All right. We're making a huge mess. We're going to smash the rest of these. Go to bed. Catch you in the morning. Let's go fishing.